All right, so welcome back. Uh, today, we're on our trip to make our game even more full-featured. We're going to be adding in these scene transitions from one scene to the other. So let's uh, get started on that. All right, so here's where we left off last time. We have our little room, camera's fixed, but we don't have the ability to switch between this scene and the other scene. So let's start with that today. So the very first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to create an empty game object, and I'm going to call this scene transition. And I'm going to give this a little marker here so that I can see where it is in the world. So if I go over to this multicolored cube, I'm going to make this be yellow. And then now I can see where it is in the world. However, if you switch back over to the game view, you can't see it. So this is just for debug and layout purposes. So I'm going to move this scene transition right there. I'm going to add as a component a box collider 2D. And let's zoom in and let's edit this collider. So I'm going to make it so it goes up to about there and then there and then over to the wall and over to the wall. And then I'm going to make sure that this is set to be a trigger. I'm also going to make this a uh, prefab object. So I'm going to drag that into my prefabs. All right, cool. Now I've got my scene transition there. Let's actually add a script so that it can do something. So in my scripts folder, I'm going to right click, create, C sharp script. And I'm going to call this scene transition. And then I'm going to open this up in uh, Visual Studio, which I don't have open already, so it's going to take a minute. So I'll meet you back here in just a second. OK, so the first thing that we're going to do, if we're going to be switching from scene to scene, we need to access another Unity library. And that is using Unity Engine.scene management so that we can manage the scenes that we're currently looking at. We're going to need a couple variables here to use so that we can reuse this object for other things. So let's make a public string. And we'll call this scene to load. Um, the other thing we're going to make here is a, or we're going to need something here to reference which position we're moving to, but we'll get to that in a second. So we don't need anything in the start method, uh, but we do, and we don't need anything in the update method. We do need an is uh, on trigger enter 2D. Good lord, I can't talk today. So public void on trigger enter 2D. And I like to change this from collision to other, just because it makes more sense to me that way. OK, so we're going to say if other other dot compare tag. And the tag we're looking for is player. And we only want to do this with the trigger collider, too. So and um, or not the trigger collider, the one that isn't a trigger, the one that's for collisions. So and not uh, other dot is trigger. Then uh, what we want to do is we want to access the scene manager dot load scene, and we're going to eventually do it load scene async. But for now, we're just going to load the scene, and the scene that we want to load is the scene to load. Um, so that's it's pretty simple there. Let's save that. Let's go back into Unity here. Let's grab our scene transition object. Let's apply our scene transition script. This is going to ask us for what scene we want to load, assuming I didn't make any errors with my syntax. Cool. So now the scene I want to load is sample scene, capital S, capital S. So sample scene. And then I want to make sure that this is going to apply to all the other prefabs. So with my scene transition highlighted, I'm going to click Apply so that any other prefab is going to have this as well. So now if I hit Play, if I go uh, from where I currently am, so that transitions me to the other scene. But it transitioned me like way the heck out here, which isn't great. I would like it to transition me to be right here, right in front of the house. So. What I'm going to do really fast here is I'm going to take a look at where my player currently is. So in the scene, in sample scene, I'm going to look at player. Currently, 
uh, 5.4, negative 7.4. So I'm going to need to reference those values in just a minute here. All right, cool. So what I want to do is, because I don't want to use the singleton pattern, I don't want my player to do that don't destroy on load stuff because that can cause some issues. What I want to do instead is I want to have a value that's a vector two position that I can just store in memory that I can have the player access to check to see where they should be when they start the scene. So that's a value that I can change using those scene transition um, elements. So for example, if I made a scriptable object that just held a vector position, I could then change that vector position when I go through one of the scene transitions and then when the player calls the uh, start function, move to where it's supposed to be. So that's what we're going to do. Um, let's go to our script and then inside our scriptable object. Let's right click, let's create a C-sharp script. I'm going to call this vector value. And I'm going to open this up in Visual Studio as well. This is a scriptable object, so it's not going to inherit from mono. It's going to inherit from scriptable object. And I want to be able to create it, so I'm going to add the create asset menu tag. I'm going to get rid of the start and update ticks. And I'm going to do just a public vector2. I'm going to call this um, initial value. All right, cool. So I'm going to save this. I'm going to go over to my scene transition here. I'm going to add a, uh, we'll call this uh, public vector2. And we'll call this a new, or actually, player position. And then we'll also make a reference to that vector value. So we'll do a public vector value. And we'll call this um, player, I don't know, memory or player storage or something. All right. So before we load the new scene, we're going to say that our player storage dot initial value is equal to player position. So, all right, cool. I'm going to save these. Let's pop back into Unity here. Let's go to our scriptable object. I'm going to right click. I'm going to create. Oops, needs to think for a second before I can create that needs to know that it should make another scriptable object. Okay, so I'm going to go to create. I'm going to create a vector value. And I'm going to call this um, player uh, position, something like that. I'm not going to put anything in there um, because, you know, I don't need to put anything in it right now. But if I go to my scene transition, my player storage is the player position. And I want the player to move to, what was it? I think it was 5.4 or 7.4. That's probably wrong. It's almost certainly wrong. But let's, uh, let's try it out. So if I hit play. Oh, ha. I didn't actually put anything in the player script to make sure that it goes there. So let's open up the player movement script. And um, we're going to make a reference to that vector value. So, um, I need to clean this up, don't I? Let's do a public vector value, and we'll call this um, starting position. And then in start, we'll say um, transform.position is equal to starting position dot initial value. All right, cool. And if I go back into Unity here, I'm going to go to my uh, my player. And I want to make sure that this happens in all of the scenes where I'm using the player. So I'm actually going to go back to my sample scene really quickly here. Save all my modifications and grab my player. And in player movement, I need that starting position now, which is a scriptable object. So I'll put my player position right there. I'm going to save this scene. 
And then I'm going to go back to my house interior and do the same thing to this player position. So I want to go to my scriptable objects, player position. There we go. All right, cool. So now we can try and see if this works. I'm almost certain I've got the wrong XY position. Um, yeah, see, it moved him up there because he's going to need to have like a starting position from here, but we'll get to that in a second. So we're going to go down. <laughs> yeah, it teleported him inside the house. Uh, okay, cool. So let's go to the scene. Let's take a look at where our player currently is. Oh, no, it didn't. It teleported him like way the heck up there. Uh, all right, that's interesting. So we'll put the X position at, say, 5? No, it needs to be 5.4 and negative 7.4 on Y. So player, do, do, do. where did I put it? Oh, it's the scene transition. So 5.4, negative 7.4 on Y. And then, um, cool, let's hit play. Let's try this out now. See if we're in the right spot. Oh, because it, ha ha ha. Um, our player right now should be at, let's say, 0, negative 3. So I'm going to find that player position, and I'm going to set it to 0, negative 3. This will be set, like, so we'll start in the sample scene, and then when we move in here, we'll reset that using the transition from the overworld into the house. So there we go. Now, let's make it so that we can go into the house from the overworld. So to do this, uh, I'm going to go to my scenes, my sample scene, save any changes. I don't, no, <clears throat> pardon me. I'm going to go to my grid over here, and I want to look at my collision. I'm going to go to the eraser, and I don't want to use interior, I want to use ground. And I want to look at the house really quickly. And I want to erase that from my collision map. So the reason I want to erase it from my collision map is I'm going to turn that one specific sprite into its own object. So now I'm going to take my tile palette aside. Let's go back to my scene here. Uh, now I'm going to go to my art, my overworld. I want to look at my sprite editor because I want to find which sprite this is. This is 163. So I want to find overworld 163, which is right here. Cool. Um, I'm going to drag this into the world just for a second. And then I'm going to go to my prefabs, grab my scene transition, put that right there. And uh, this one is going to get a sprite renderer. And the sprite renderer is going to have as a sprite, where is it? Overworld 163. I guess I didn't need to pull that one into the scene. Uh, Overworld 163. And it's going to be, does it need to be two? Okay, and my scene transition should be 5.5 and negative 7.5. And on this one, I can modify that box collider a little bit so that I don't accidentally go into the house when I don't want to. So we'll do this. Let's resize it so that it's pretty much where we want it to be. Um, Let's actually just make it one by one. That's good. And then an offset of zero by zero. No, let's, let's make it shorter on Y then. Okay, cool. That works. And then for this scene transition, let's save our scenes here. Um, the position I want it to go to is zero, negative three. So if I hit play, I'm going to go do, do, do. 
object not set to, oh, it doesn't know what scene it needs to load, that's why. So we're not loading sample scene, and it also doesn't know the player storage. So we're not loading sample scene, we're loading um, house interior, and then from my scriptable objects, my player position vector value is right there. So let's hit play, and Hmm, what is it not getting? Oh, I haven't added it to the build settings. All right, cool. So house interior here needs to be added to the build settings. To do that, I'm going to go to file, build settings, and I'm going to add house interior. All right, let's hit play. Let's try this one more time. Hopefully this time it's going to work. It already transported me. That's interesting. All right, cool. So that uh, that 7.4, or that negative 7.4 isn't enough. So let's go to our scriptable objects, player position. Let's do um, 5.4, negative 8. Because what happened is our, our player immediately triggered it. There we go. And so, there we go. Now there's that weird camera shift that's happening. If you want to avoid that camera shift, um, here's what we can do to fix that. Uh, if we go to our script and our camera movement script, and then in the start method, we're just going to say our transform.position is equal to, and we're just setting it directly to the position, right? Yeah is equal to target.position. So we won't have that weird smoothing anymore. So let's hit play and let's try this out. So I know I still have that sprite of the door right in the middle of everything, but that's OK. Oh, OK. I forgot that it needs to have a, a Z position. So we'll say is equal to new vector3 target.position.x target.position.y transform.position.z so that it doesn't smash right into the map so it has an actual z position so let's go back to unity hit play a lot of little errors in this one so thank you very much for bearing with me <laughs> Alright, cool. So now, nope, still does that weird shift. Did I not save it? Nope, I saved the script. Huh. Okay, well, I guess um, I'll have to fix that another time. So, uh, there we go. We've got our scene transitions built. Uh, now, next time we're going to talk about actually making a cool transition effect. There's a lot of different ways you can do transition effects. Um, I know there's somebody in the Discord who made this really, really neat. I'm sorry, I don't remember your name right now. Who made this really, really neat um, transition effect where instead of it having it be a separate scene, he um, created a surface on top of everything. Uh, and then the rest of it blacked out, which I thought was kind of cool. But we're going to be looking at some fade in, fade outs, and some wipes for our transitions. So um, be looking forward to that next time. If you have any questions, you can feel free to leave them in the comments down below. You can follow me on Twitter to find out when I post a new video. You can join me on Discord, where I'm chatting pretty much every day. And yeah, I hope this video finds you well, and that you have yourselves a wonderful day.